This is the inter-Korean border. We're at the 38th parallel. This is about 35 miles from Seoul, and just over there is North Korea. Now, Pyongyang has a mass, an arsenal of intercontinental ballistic missiles, weapons, and even nuclear capabilities. Now, for most people in South Korea, they might be relaxed in coffee shops, at institutes, going about their normal lives. But because of what's happening just over there, we can never be quite safe because despite what the experts might tell you, nobody exactly knows what Chairman Kim Jong-un might do next. Korea's endless war began with competing visions of a modern Korean nation that were born during the country's struggle for independence. That war, a war itself, has created two of the world's most unique countries from a single people and culture. One isolated and cut like in its adoration of its leaders. The other, a global center of pop culture and technology. It's hard to think about missiles when you're chilling out with a nice Americano in the middle of the city. We see the news reports and international press, but we just get on with our daily lives, hobbies, work, universities, and exercise. And if you come to Seoul, it's very likely that you too will have a great time. You'll enjoy yourself, make friends, see amazing things, and go home perfectly safe. In fact, Seoul actually feels a lot safer than many other major cities, with relatively little in the way of antisocial behavior, street crime, or violence. Wise men have said in the past that to understand the present, we need to look at history. And that's why this piece of paper right here is very important. This is the Korean Armistice Agreement. And what it did in 1953, 70 years ago this month, is it brought an end to the conflict that had gripped the Korean Peninsula. Now, the Korean War was unlike many other wars in that it was not a stable section of troops fighting each other on a front line. Rather, this was a conflict that ripped up and down the peninsula, tearing apart homes, families, and people's livelihoods. It had a devastating impact on the people of this land, particularly ones that placed a great emphasis on family, on lineage, and on hometowns. But if the Armistice Agreement wasn't a peace treaty, then what was it? And does this mean Korean War is still going? So the two Koreas are technically still at war. The peninsula is home to what some people call the Endless War. And that's why today your brother, your classmates, and your favorite K-pop star has got to spend nearly two years performing mandatory military service. They need to be ready to defend the country should the North ever decide to invade again. The fighting in the Korean War eventually came to an end in 1953. In early of that year, the American president changed hands, and then a few months later, Joseph Stalin, one of the instigators of the conflict, passed away. This meant that Washington, Beijing, and Pyongyang were all coming together, trying to find a solution out of this conflict. Everybody was happy to see the fighting stop for a moment. Everybody, it seems, except the South Korean president, Lee Sung Man. Right, when I was looking at the Armistice Agreement, I found something very interesting. I saw Chinese signature, North Korean signature, as well as American one, but not the South Korean one. And that was because of President Lee Sung Man. Our president was incensed by the idea of stopping the fighting. He was determined to take the North by force, and for the whole two years, people negotiated the ceasefire, and President Lee Sung Man refused to support it. There weren't many people quite like President Lee Sung Man. His extraordinary life began way back in 1875 in Hwanghae-do, in what is now North Korea. His family was not wealthy, but they proudly traced his lineage back to the founder of the Joseon dynasty, and so he often claimed to have royal blood. Love him or hate him, he became South Korea's first president in 1948. He was his own man and he had one goal to reunite the country under his leadership. This caused some problems with the Americans who could not really control or even trust them sometimes. The South Korean president, Lee Sung Man, did have his supporters, however. There were many that followed him, with banners being raised in the sky, saying, down with the armistice and don't sell out our country. And that's why in mid-June, President Lee Sung Man secretly released about 27,000 North Korean prisoners who said they didn't want to go back up towards Pyongyang. Now, this greatly angered Beijing and Washington, who had been coming together trying to do this deal. 
So much so, in fact, that Washington even put together plans to possibly put John Chang in as the new South Korean president. However, despite Lee Seung Man's efforts to sabotage the negotiations and with two final Chinese offenses on the South Korean positions, the armistice was eventually signed and the fighting on this land finally came to a halt. The Korean War didn't produce any winners, but for North Korea, it was a disaster. They found their city, their country bombed, they didn't achieve their goal of unification, and it only served to strengthen the alliance between South Korea and the United States. Kim Il-sung, the North Korean leader, learned lessons from this. He then tried to really develop his country in terms of industry, military, so that he might go for a final push again in the future. North Korea has painted itself into a corner where it can't open up to get the economic assistance that it needs. That would bring information into the country and undermine the regime that controls it there. Here in South Korea, the country is obviously prospering. There is K-pop Hallyu booming around the world and the relationship between Washington and Seoul remains as strong as ever. And for the South, it has left us with one of the largest armed forces. Rather than reunite the people by force, the lesson here has been to engage in a race of economic development and demonstrate the superiority of their cultural and political system, not only to the people of Seoul, but also Pyongyang and the rest of the world. The endless war here on the Korean Peninsula continues. However, for many people in South Korea, they know an element of peace. And that's thanks to the armistice agreement that was signed 70 years ago this month. The writer George Orwell once said that people sleep peacefully in their beds only because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. And never has that been more true than in this land right here. The people of South Korea are safe and they're safe because of that very important document and the people that protect them on this land.